Hi, I'm Alex, an ICU trauma nurse here to help you navigate your healthcare and the healthcare of your loved ones. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about signs that you may need to go to the ER if you've recently had surgery or a baby. Uh, the reason that I say surgery or a baby is because if you've had something done that may cause you to lose a lot of blood, a little bit of blood, these are signs that if you're seeing at home, you definitely want to go to the ER and can possibly save your life, reduce complications, and just, you know, overall result in a better outcome. So the first time, the first sign we're going to talk about is abnormal weakness and fatigue accompanied with being really, really cold. These can be indications of internal bleeding. Um, if you're feeling these symptoms, but you're not sure if you're bleeding internally, a good sign that would also indicate bleeding would be low blood pressure, which would contribute to the weakness, the coldness, the fatigue, and a high heart rate. If you take your pulse and it's anything over 100 within 60 seconds, if you're, if you're taking a timer and you're counting your pulse for 60 seconds and it's anything over 100 and you're able to take your blood pressure and it's anything under 120 over 80, if it's under 120 over 80, that might mean that you have low blood pressure. Um, accompanied with these signs of weakness, fatigue, and being cold, you may be bleeding. This could be an emergency. And if you go to the hospital in time, it could prevent complications, okay? The second thing we're going to talk about is calf pain that is accompanied with swelling, redness, and just overall discomfort. If you're looking at your calf and you're like, what's going on with my leg? Um, this can end up being a deep vein thrombosis, which is caused by bleeding internally in your body. So what happens is, is that when your body's bleeding, in order for your body to protect itself, it starts throwing out clotting factors then what happens is this big clot forms because your body is trying to stop the bleeding, but then the clot gets stuck in your leg and it stops the blood flow from going through your veins and your arteries. And all of a sudden that DVT, deep vein thrombosis, is an indication that you are not receiving blood flow to that leg. Okay, so signs of DVT would be that inflammation, swelling, uh, redness and pain. If you notice that your leg is red, but then like your toes might look a little discolor discolored, um, you definitely want to go check, get it checked out in the ER. A simple ultrasound will find a DVT. And if you have a DVT, um, this can absolutely be fixed and prevented. DVTs could lead to pulmonary emb embolisms, which could result in death. The third thing I'm going to talk about is the pulmonary embolism. So if you are suspecting a PE, you're going to have shallow breathing, um, pain when you try to take a deep breath, and just difficulty catching your breath. A PE could also be something uh, that could be avoided, but this is an emergency, so you want to go to the ER to try to... Um, prevent complications from this and even death from this. An x-ray will determine if you have a pulmonary em embolism. I wouldn't suggest that you go to urgent care for an x-ray because if you do have a PE, they're not going to be able to do much for you in urgent care. They're going to have to send you to the ER and that is going to be time wasted that the medical team could be saving your life. The fourth thing we're going to talk about is if you've had surgery or a baby in a C-section and you have a wound and it's been a few days and you see that you have a like foul smelling discharge coming out of the wound um, or discoloration, it's looking too yellow, it's looking green, the, the, the pus is not looking good. 
Um, you want to go to the ER if you feel that it does smell and if it's painful. If the wound is painful and it's not closing properly, this could be an emergency. This could be an infection that can absolutely get worse if you don't get the proper treatment and antibiotics, okay? The fifth thing we're going to talk about is urinary retention. Sometimes uh, after anesthesia, although they will discharge you from the hospital if you're urinating, but you can go home if you feel like you're still not urinating properly, if you're having urine retention, which could happen after anesthesia, um, you definitely want to either call your doctor or go to the ER because they're going to have to empty that bladder. A bladder that is full could end up bursting, which is an emergency and requires immediate surgery and uh, a full bladder could also increase your blood pressure which could be signs of headaches um, god forbid that your blood pressure goes up and you just had a baby and maybe you're having headaches that could be a very bad sign for bursting vessels in the brain um, so just watch your urine make sure you're paying attention to how much you're peeing Make sure you're paying attention and touching yourself if you're feeling any pain in the bladder and you want to go to the ER if you are experiencing this, okay? And the last thing I'm going to talk about is compartment syndrome. So when we have surgery on any of our extremities or any surgery in the center of our body, um, this trauma of, of surgery causes inflammation, which is normal in the healing process. But sometimes the inflammation... Uh, contains itself within the skin and it causes pressure in the blood vessels, the arteries, and then that pressure stops blood flow to your extremity or to your body. So signs of compartment syndrome would be kind of like a DVT. You'd have inflammation, you'd feel a lot of tightness and wouldn't be able to necessarily move that extremity or, or move that part of your body. Um, there's redness and there's heat coming from the surgical sites. Compartment syndrome is an emergency. Um, compartment syndrome will stop blood flow to that part of your body. And that is something that needs to be taken care of immediately that doctors need to get in there and release the pressure of all that inflammation. If you go to the ER in time, they will absolutely take care of it and avoid compartment syndrome turning into, you know, something very serious that can lead to removing the extremity or, you know, necrosis, which is killing the cells in that area of your body. So you definitely want to go to the ER for compartment syndrome. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions about anything whatsoever, you can email me at alexyourrn at gmail.com. Thank you and have a great day.